Markets are a creation of human beings. Through most of the history of the human race, goods and services were not distributed by markets. It's a relatively infrequent institution for distribution. Even today, all kinds of limits and, and existence, uh, institutions exist, arrangements exist, where goods and services are, are distributed from person A to person B, from the producer to the consumer, but not by means of a market. And by market, I mean a kind of quid pro quo. I'll give you three of these oranges, you give me two shirts. I'll give you four pieces of dollar, and you give me a hamburger. That kind of, that's a market way of distributing. I'm not going to give you the hamburger, that is, I'm not going to just, I'm the hamburger maker, I'm not going to distribute it to you, the hamburger consumer, unless you give me something in return that satisfies me. That's a market arrangement. And you really kind of all know that we don't like markets in all kinds of situations. We don't create a market. We, in fact, block a market when we don't like it. There is nothing magical. Let me give you an example. I can see from your faces. I need to. <laughs> so I, the one I like most, I'll start with, is the example, because it's the month of November, it's the example of the Thanksgiving dinner. You gather with your grandma and your mother, and you sit around the table, and mother, because I'm talking about a traditional family, has been slaving over the stove all day, making the turkey, stuffing it and glazing it, and all the things you do with a turkey. And now, and now having made the turkey, she gathers the family, and an interesting act occurs. The turkey, made by the producer, Mama, is going to be distributed to all the members of the family. Here's something Ma Mama is not going to do. Charge you for it. <laughs> You're well, it's very important. You're not going to distribute the turkey by means of a market exchange. You're not. And similarly, at the end of the meal, when everyone has eaten too much, that's part of the tradition, of course, everyone's kind of ill, <laughs> too much tryptophan, if you know the chemical that's actually in that bird. And then Mama, in a moment perhaps of weakness, reach, reaches across the table and says to you, because you're a nice young person, would you please take out the, the trash that we've accumulated during the meal? But you, having just come back from college and your economics course, where you learned about the efficiency of a market, you're quick to answer, sure, Ma, four dollars. <laughs> because you're going to distribute to her the service of removing the garbage and you want that this service be distributed to a person who has the money to make the quid pro quo market exchange. But surprised by this, your father, having witnessed this, reaches across the table and smacks you in the face. <laughs> And then he gives you a very profound lesson in economics. And here's how it goes. Here's how it goes. That's disgusting, he says, looking at your eyes. What are you doing? Now watch the words. This is a family. We love each other. We do this. Mama made the turkey. She passed it to you. She asks you to help. We, we're a fa we love each other. We want to help each other. We, Mama wanted to make the turkey. You should want to help out with the garbage. If we actually related to one another by paying each other quid pro quo for the job, that wouldn't be a loving relationship. That would be disgusting. Imagine if that philosophy operated outside the house, too. <laughs> Think a minute. If there's a contradiction between love and markets, what an idea. <laughs> Whoa. Just imagine where that could go. Yeah. And you know all the other exceptions, too, right? There's nothing absolute about a market. We declare markets in certain things utterly illegal. If I walk up to one of you and suggest certain intimate acts together, and you say to me, fine, $12, uh, we got a problem. That's illegal. That's a market exchange. No, 
mustn't do. And the argument is the same. The argument in our culture is sex between us should be a matter of love, desire, affection, but it should not be <gasps> a financial transaction, a marketing. That is, you go to jail for that. Not everywhere. And those people who insist on engaging in that have to hide it, have to keep it away because they can get into a lot. We forbid market transactions in sex, in drugs, in a whole lot of transactions. Wow. Here's another one to think about. A corporation needs a law. It goes to the people who make laws, our congressmen and women. And it says, how much? How much? I need a law. How much? If the congressman and woman says $15,000, they go to jail if they're caught. That's an illegal market transaction. We require them to go into enormous contortions to get this transaction done in such a way that there's no record of there having been the transaction that there was. What a strange arrangement. What a strange arrangement. So we don't allow market. We don't believe markets are some magical institution. But here's the best part. Even where we let ma markets go, let's remember what a market is. A market is not what is taught in the university. It's not about supply and demand. Markets do not supply what people demand. They supply what people can afford. That's a very different thing. We could easily here come up with the demands we think a society like ours has for goods and services to be produced. That's not what is in being produced, it's not what's going to be produced. What's produced is where the money is. So now let's go back to what the CBO told us. Over the last 30 years, the 1% at the top are getting twice as much of the income. That means that goods and services twice as many of them as before, are going to be used to supply the demand of that 1%. And the other 99% with 10% less of the income are going to get less of what they need and want. That's what the market does. It validates and reinforces the distribution of income. 